Police officers have the right and responsibility to shoot and kill if they feel threatened, but are some officers taking advantage of that? A major investigation done by the Texas Tribune says over the past six years, officers in Texas's largest cities shot at an unarmed person 109 times. You're looking at video from last year when 19-year-old Christian Taylor was shot and killed inside a car dealership by an officer in Arlington. That officer was fired. Of those 109 instances, 37 people were killed, 44 injured, and 28 missed their target. However, four of those officers were disciplined. 45 of these cases were in Houston, more than any other city in Texas. The question is, is this evidence of excessive force? That's our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you on our Fox 26 Facebook page. You can also weigh in on Twitter using the hashtag Fox 26 Roundup. Joining us live in the newsroom is our panel, led by our senior legal analyst, Chris Tritico, Democratic media consultant Mustafa Tamiz, and Republican strategist and public policy analyst Jackie Bally. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, certainly very difficult to put yourself in an officer's shoes when faced with a suspect who's not complying. That's why body cameras are so important now. It absolutely yes. is. Before we get to that, uh, Sally, I have to say that Sam Houston State University, which we've all acknowledged is the best university in Texas, Go won, Cougs. Its, won its opener last night, <laughs> 59 to 14. Congratulations to, to the Bearcats. There You're we wearing go. your go orange. Cougs. We all, right. Go. all right. Moving on. The, <laughs> The, the issue is, and, and, and this needs to be stated right up front, most police shootings are justified, which is why most police officers are not indicted when they use, ex, use their weapon in, 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 in an incident. And so the fact that a lot of officers are not indicted when it goes to the grand jury should not be surprising. That does not mean that this number, four out of 109, is a justified number, Mustafa Tamiz, and that's really what the Texas Tribune is looking at. These 109 are unarmed people that were shot at. And so is this the evidence that you need to, when you're evaluating police police violence or violence in general, to say, is there a problem in policing? I don't know if this is... Um uh, conclusive in any way. It, it just gives the number. Uh, police in Houston, for example, we stop a uh, police officer stop a million people every year. Uh, so it's a huge number, amount of transactions that occur between police officers and community. Um, but there is a there is a challenge there, and we have to overcome it. And and that's both working with the community and the police department. I've trained 1,500 police officers in Texas on community relations personally. So I, I spent a lot of time with police officers, and this is a uh, this is a challenge for us when when people see these type of reports. It raises the anxiety in the community. It makes the police officers' job more difficult. And then we follow this vicious cycle, and we have to start interrupting this cycle by being more engaged on both sides. When you take the number of shootings. In, in, in the city of Houston over this same period of time, given the number of police calls, it's a relatively no num low number. Yes, and, and we've been very blessed in Houston, in the Houston region, that we don't see many incidents where uh, you're having uh, in, in other communities that unjustified killings. Uh, I do believe that community policing, we've discussed this several times on the show, is extremely important, especially with the strained relations we now have with the African American community and the police department. I think it's extremely important, like Mustafa, I've worked with many, many police officers, getting into the communities, getting to know the leaders in the community so the members of the community feel more comfortable with the officers and vice versa on the flip of that in this uh, in our, our state of texas we are leading with the largest number of officers who've been killed in the line of duty the only uh, the chicago which um, had the illinois which had the second largest number of black on black crimes they only have two officers who've been killed this year we've had 14 so and the number of officers who've been killed have jumped 75 percent so the numbers on both sides are very scary all right, I want to talk about the community policing when we come back. But let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, we're going to pull up some tweets for you right now. The first one is from the Texas Tribune itself, uh, pointing out from their article, experts say police have wide discretion on when to shoot, including when they're off duty. And they point out that in 66 of the shootings, the officers involved were actually off duty, working a second job at a bar or someplace like that. Uh, former GOP John says, if being a cop is so hard, we should demand 
demand better educated, better trained recruits. Any idiot, he says, can get a badge today. And uh, finally, at We Need Superman says there's a lot we don't know about police shootings. There is no consistent statewide effort to collect such data. And indeed, the Tribune, I mean, they spent a year working on this and collecting this data. Right. Well, there is. I do agree there's no, there's no statewide effort to collect the data because there's no statewide reason to collect the data uh, until we started paying attention to it now, but there was no reason to collect it at that point. And Jackie brought up uh, this, the, the community policing, which is fine for a city the size of Sugar Land. You, it's really hard to do a community, real community policing effort in a city the size of Houston. Well, there's w ways of adopting it. Um, the person who wrote the textbook on uh, on community policing is, is former Mayor Lee Brown from Houston. That's right. Uh, and so there, there, there are tactics that, that can be incorporated. But, but the bigger issue right now is that we have to find a way to lower these tensions. And I think we have to acknowledge that there are some challenges that occur between African-American community and police. And both sides will have to come to the table and start talking with each other we're not going to find a way to get through this just with more data we're going to get a, we're going to find a way to get through this by building respect mutually and building trust and what you're saying with the mayor and a lot of the council members they are actually doing many components of community policing by going into the communities by having uh, members of faith talk to the members in the community by telling them look the cops are somebody we should trust they're like leaders just like teachers and and ministers and people we should we should like and trust and the community needs to feel more comfortable with the police officers so the police officers can go into their communities and do their jobs. It sounds like you're talking more about rhetoric than you are about action. I mean, in other words, the rhetoric is, is causing a lot of the problem. Well, well, rhetoric, well, look, but also these videos that are out there. So we can't just say that there are no issues nationally out there uh, and this is all just a bunch of talk. That, that's not true. At the same time, uh, we have to balance the, the actual issues with real community challenges and, and policing so and I we think have if we have to talk with each other rather than at each other right, we have to remember that the largest number of officers killed in the line of duty happened in our state all right we're gonna leave it right there we'll be back in about 20 minutes with another really good topic okay reminder you can use the hashtag Fox 26 roundup to weigh in we'll see you guys then